Hi, my name is Paul Gordon of iState.tv, and you are watching Headlines You May Have Missed. And this is Hiding Bias Under Straight News. That's the title for this episode of Headlines You May Have Missed. And the date there, as you see, if you're watching the video version and you're not listening to the audio, is Thursday, January 11th, 2018. In this episode, we're going to be talking about the subtle bias weapon, Turkey throws a tantrum, the 7-Eleven raids, BuzzFeed sued, drink on Sunday, yay, Iran instability, and more on this episode of Headlines You May Have Missed. And what we do is we have headlines, and we see how many headlines can we get through in the course of a 20-minute period of time. So we're going to go to our first story. We have our first story prompted up here. You can't see the headline yet, but you will. And then we're going to start our 20-minute clock. Let's get to our first story here. Subtle bias pollutes report on 3D printed guns. So first, I'm going to just describe, a, I'm actually going to read. This is an article in 3Dears.org, and then I'm going to give you my editorial here. This might go a little bit long, but I guess I'll do this every once in a while. Defense, Dep this is their headline. Well, my headline is subtle bias pollutes report on 3D printed guns. Their headline is Defense Distributed Calls on Supreme Court to Lift Ban of Sharing 3D Printed Gun Files. I've already covered this story, I think, a couple of days ago, but I posted it again more for how this person covered this story. I'm going to read just a part of it. As if American gun laws weren't con convoluted enough, 3D printed firearms, also known as ghost guns, are making regulation policies even more complicated and difficult to report. Uh, in a recent development, a defense distributor, a controversial online organization dedicated to designing and proliferating downloadable and 3D printed ghost guns has filed a lawsuit against the U.S. State Department to challenge the latter's efforts to regulate 3D printed guns and limit how they are distributed. The actual suit is, is, is that uh, they should be able to share 3D printed plans with people freely. It's, so the person... Kind of got that wrong right from the start. So there toward the end here, I'll read, while elsewhere in the world, 3D printed guns and firearms are far more or less, are more or less a black and white topic. People are not allowed to make their own or unregistered guns. Therefore, untraceable 3D printed guns are illegal. Within the U.S., the legality of 3D printed weapons is complicated by the ever controversial Second Amendment. The ever controversial. So then this is my take on it. The name of the writer of this article is Tess, and I'm going to assume that Tess is writing for 3 deersorg uh, If she is writing, I'm going to assume she, Tess is a she. Why not? That Tess is well aware of 3D printing technology and a lot of the ways in which 3D printing opens up choice and empowers individuals and free associations. Yet with all that knowledge... And I'm assuming a lot on my part. Tess appears to side with the course of enterprise when it comes to allowing or not allowing the most fundamental of individual and free association empowering rights that humans can have to be able to equip themselves with effective tools for self-defense. Now, I'm not going to read everything that I wrote here. And I encourage you to go to isheadlines.com. You'll find the link to this show which has all of the links to all of the stories that we're going to talk about here, plus a whole lot more. So I, I just want to I just want to bring this this point. What we're talking about here is subtle bias, and this is an important tactic to be aware of because subtle bias has far more of an effect on the reader than does direct bias, such as you'll find on iState.tv. Uh, I don't make any effort to appear as if I'm doing straight news reporting here, not even in headlines you may have missed. I'm not, I'm not an unbiased reporter here. I'm, I'm doing editorializing, but I'm open about it. It behooves a discerning reader to train their minds to watch for these subtle bias tactics, lest they be influenced to think a certain way without ever 
having come to terms with why they actually have those thoughts. The subtle bias tactic relies on emotions far more than it does critical logical thought, as can be demonstrated in this piece, which gives no real logical backing to the emotional word bombs they plant throughout this piece. And maybe you notice some of the word bombs there, as if American gun laws were controversial enough are making regulation policies even more complicated. Uh, there toward the end, 3D printed and firearms are far more or less black and white. Uh, black and white. In other words, she's planning the subtle state. Hey, this is a, this is, everybody else has figured out that, you know, non-government people should not have guns. It's only the United States that hasn't figured this out. Anyway, go, go to isheadlines.com and you can read my editorial there in whole and you can also click through and read their whole article and, and tell me am i right am i wrong i feel pretty sure that i'm right or our next headline a crack in the turkey russia iran alliance appears this is from arab news turkey called on russian and a uh, russian iran on wednesday to press pressure the syrian regime to halt a military offensive in syria's opposition held idib province which damascus launched despite an international deal to reduce hostilities there as pro regime forces pressed the assault the russian defense ministry's newspaper said moscow had asked the turkish military to tighten control over armed groups in idib it says militants had used the province as the launch pad for a drone attack on two Russian bases in the last week. Idib has become a focal point of the Syrian war as Assad's forces and allied militia have thrust toward an insurgent-held air base. Idib, bordering Turkey, is the largest single chunk of Syria still under control of opposition groups fighting President Bashir Assad. So keep paying attention to that. I think uh, on uh, is daily on monday uh professor rambo and i we talked about what's going on in the middle east and how the alliances are forming and it seems to be centered around russia china the u.s but even those alliances there's there's conflicting in interest within those alliances so those alliances some of them are more shaky than others let's get to our net headline over 100 7-Elevens raided nationwide by ICE. And this is from the Review Journal. U.S. Immigration and Customs Enforcement officers arrested 21 suspected undocumented employees Wednesday at 7-Eleven at a 7-Eleven franchise or at 7-Eleven franchise locations across the country, including in Nevada. The arrest, which are administrative, I don't know what that means, and require those arrested to appear in immigration court were part of an ice sweep in which the agency served 98 7-Eleven convenience stores with audit notices, a tool the agency uses to monitor whether stores are hiring undocumented workers. It was not known how many locations in Nevada were served. Today's action sends a strong message to U.S. businesses that hire and employ an illegal workforce. ICE will enforce the law, and if you are found to be breaking the law, in other words, you fall into a category that makes you quote-unquote illegal, you'll be held accountable. ICE Deputy Director Thomas B. Homan said in an emailed statement Wednesday, Derek Benner, a top ICE official, told the Associated Press Wednesdays that Wednesday's operation was the first of many and a harbinger of what's to come for employees. So the crackdown on people who are living here in America and trying to live their lives that have been deemed illegal by my laws is, is only going to increase. I right, can get to our next headline. Trump's personal lawyer sues BuzzFeed. And this is from NOLA.com. Donald Trump's personal attorney, Michael Cohen, said sued BuzzFeed Inc. on Tuesday for defamation over allegations about him in a dossier the news organization published that was commissioned in 2016 by the president's political opponents, Hillary. Cohen said he also, oh, by the way, that dossier does appear to be the basis for the spying on the Trump administration as well. So they took a dossier that was paid for by Trump's opposition, and they used that dossier to justify spying on the Trump administration. Cool. Cohen said he also, and, and that was sarcasm, by the way, 
Cohen said he also filed a second defamation suit against political intelligence firm Fusion GPS, which compiled the dossier in federal court. BuzzFeed published the dossier in its entirety nearly a year ago, which it said it obtained, obtained from a source it didn't identify. The dossier contains unverified claims that Cohn and Trump had suspicious connection with Russian figures. Uh, most other U.S. organizations declined to publish the doc document uh, because of many of its claims, some of them salacious, haven't been s substantiated. It will be proven that I have no involvement in this Russian collusion conspiracy, Cohen said in an interview Tuesday. My name was included only because of my proximity to the president. Now, I got to tell you that uh, from my perspective, uh, I'm I'm somewhat enjoying the internecine nature of the government right now as I see it turn on itself as operatives in different camps are being forced, being flushed out and finding themselves being much more overt in how these camps uh, attack one another it really shows you the nature of of government in and of itself it's a it's a power center that attracts power people and power is not necessarily a bad thing in and of itself but uh these folks they don't they don't understand well i say they don't appreciate reciprocal power maybe is as much as I do, they don't see the usefulness of having neighbors that maybe won't want to someday stab them in the neck. They probably believe that they have the power to do whatever they want to their neighbors and their neighbors won't be able to stab them in the neck. Well, on to the next headline. Indiana considering allowing people to buy alcohol on Sundays. Oh my gosh, so wonderful. Apparently the crown is pleased, at least in Indiana, to allow you to finally buy and sell alcohol on Sunday. Well, 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 hold on, hold on, folks. Let's not get ahead of ourselves. Not yet. The bill was introduced in Indiana State Senate and will soon hit the Senate floor after it passed a major hurdle, making it out of committee. Yesterday, January 11, 2018, the bill was voted out of the Senate's Public Policy Committee by a vote of nine to nothing. Not one member of that Senate committee chose to tell the people of Indiana that the Crown was not pleased to have them buy or sell alcohol on Sunday. Oh, I wonder why that is. They decided, hey man, maybe we should stop being dinguses in this in this particular regard not in all regards just in this particular regard we're going to undingus ourselves the people of indiana thank you nine crown representatives for choosing to set the potential for the crown to definitely say hey we are now pleased to allow you to buy and sell this certain thing on sunday you're welcome so thanks crown Thanks for giving us hope. See, the system works. By the way, that that uh, sar sarcasm mode had been activated at that moment, and hopefully you picked that up. To our next headline, is the Iranian regime falling apart? So I chose this story, maybe not so much because I... I'm not sure the degree to which this is true or not. Just the, the narratives that are are being pushed right now and it's it could very well be true it could very well very well be the little uh self-fulfilling prophecy that they're hoping gets in the hearts and minds of the iranians who might throw overthrow this one horrible regime so that they can usher in a, a new horrible regime that maybe will be a little bit more friendly to america and whatnot but be that as it may, this is the report from Jerusalem Post. Uh, not a biased source at all. That was sarcasm again. The labyrinth of proxies maintained by the Islamic Republic and the chasm of oligarchs' pockets are costing so much that the toil of the Iranian working class cannot even produce basic food and shelter for their families. This time, a new element has been added to the whole equation. It is not only the middle-class university students and a group of elites that organized these protests, put on their masks not to be identified, and gushed, that's their word, gushed into the streets. This time, the spate, uh, the spurt of protesters is formed of the working class, who 
was nothing left to lose. The working class who share the pie goes to proxy wars and wrongdoers abroad. That kind of sounds like here. Okay, just go on, Paul. Come on, ignore that. That's that's wrong, Paul. That's wrong. It has been many days to in ro many days in a row. I, I think they're missing an A there. It has been many days in a row that the government has been organizing pro-government demonstrations. This level of continuity of such demonstrations is unusual, even during the anniversary of the revolution. And I encourage you again to go to isheadlines.com. You'll find the archives of the shows. And then you can find the link and read more at, at, at Jerusalem Post and see if you can identify the, the sentences, the claims that maybe don't necessarily seem unsubstantiated or maybe you're wondering, how do you know that? Well, let's get to the next headline. And the next headline is, AI-driven news coming to China. This is so cool. And you really want to go to isheadlines.com because there is a cool video, well, relatively speaking, a cool video called Xinhao, Xinhua to further integrate AI into news production. And the story is from NeimanLab.org, and their title is China's newest agency is reinventing itself with AI. Well, that's a friendly title. On the heels of billions of yen of investment burrowed into China's artificial intelligence scene, China's state news agency has announced that it is rebuilding its newsroom to emphasize human-machine collaboration. Singularity, baby! You'll have to Google that if you don't know what that means. Xinhua News Agency President Kai Mingzhao said Xinhua will build a new kind of newsroom based on information technology and featuring human-machine collaboration. The agency also introduced the Media Brain platform to integrate cloud computing, the Internet of Things, AI, and more into news production with potential applications from finding leads to news gathering, editing, distribution, and finally feedback analysis. It's fascinating stuff. The agency's announcement was sparse on details, but it's the latest component of a deep push into AI by China. Last week, the country announced its plans for a two-point... Well, okay, I don't, I don't need to read the rest. If you want to read the rest, be sure you go to isheadlines.com. I don't know if I say that enough. Let's get to the next headline. Did insects predate flowing, flowering? I should say flowering. I said flowing plants. No, it should say flowering plants. Signs point to yes. In And that this is from fizz.org. And their title is, In Pond Scum, Scientists Find Answers to One Evolution's which came first cases. So, the you know, this is kind of the, the chicken or the egg. What came first, the, the bees or the flowers? Because if the flowers came first and they didn't have the bees, dude, how'd they do that? If the bees came first, what, what did they, where'd they get their, you know, pollen, whatever? So... Uh, uh, again, from fizz.org, absent flowers, a researcher's report, primitive moths and butterflies known as the glossata developed the physical attributes, namely the sucking proboscis, to find nutrition by drawing off water droplets from the tips of immature gymnosperm seeds. What we found is that these butterflies and moths with mouth parts were feeding on pollen droplets of gymnosperm seeds from conifers related to pines, seed plants without fruits and flowers. They were feeding off the cone-borne seeds, mainly as a source of water, said Strother. Even Charles Darwin called the mysterious evolution of flowering plants an abominable mystery. Scientists have reckoned that flowering plants, plants preceded the insects that fed off of them, but researchers have gradually started to piece together evidence that moths and butterflies existed earlier than the Cretaceous period, which began 145 million years ago. So there you have it. And again, go to isheadlines.com and you can read this article more, more fully. We're going to the next headline because we're running out of time here. We're getting close. I, got, I don't know if I'm going to get to them all, but I'm going to try. Or the ones that I selected to get to. Facebook's expensive alternative to Amazon Echo. And this is from QZ.com. 
And their headline is, Facebook may be ready to invade your physical world with an outrageously priced video device. As fellow tech giants Amazon, Google, and Apple go after the burgeoning smart device market, Facebook wants in too. Its product, digital outlet Cheddar reports, a voice-enabled video chat device named Portal will directly compete with Amazon's Echo product line to enter consumer homes. Rather than portray the device as a smart assistant, however, Facebook will position it as an extension of the social platform's core use. Another way for family and friends to stay connected, of course. I don't know. That's creeping me out. The company plans to formally launch the product in early May to coincide with its annual developer. Here, Here's the big part here. Uh, whereas Amazon and Google are flooding the market with cheap smart speakers, Sporter comes with a hefty price tag of $499 as opposed to the Echo Show, which is $229. And we're just about out of time here. So let me let me just look at, or I'll just give you some of the headlines here that we didn't get into as we run out of time. So we didn't get to... Using blockchain to trade energy, using AI to perfect gene editing, and some of the headlines that I didn't have scheduled. France, first France, now Brazil, unveils plans to empower the government to censor the internet in the name of stopping fake news. And finally, U.S. House to vote on FISA mass surveillance bill today. Okay, there you go. That last one you're going to want to look into. And that's it, man. That's that's. That's the end of this show. We we got through the 20 minutes. We will be back tomorrow at the same time, 12.30 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. And if you haven't yet, make sure that you like uh, the Facebook page, The Sovereignty Network, because that's about where I'm going to be heading over to. And you can watch Crypto Corner Live with uh, Kurt Walker Jr., Really cool show. I enjoy it, so I promote it. I don't get paid to promote the show, and I'm not directly affiliated with Sovereignty Network. I th I just think it's a cool show that a lot of people who really want to learn crypto, it's a great, great show. You'll learn a lot. And outside of that, join me tonight as we have Is Daily Thursday with Lou Sander as, as the co-host tonight. He's the Thursday co-host with me. And he's also from the Freedom Fiends. Uh, he just did a show last night on Freedom Fiends, which hasn't posted yet. I'm waiting for the show to post, Lou, so I can listen to it. But join us tonight on the Liberty Principal Facebook page at 9 p.m. Eastern Standard Time as we look at the shorter leash, the longer leash, and off the leash, which is something we do every every Thursday. So I'll see you guys tomorrow afternoon. And also, uh, well, tomorrow afternoon on Headlines You May Have Missed, and also to, well, tonight at 9 p.m. on Is Daily Thursday.